How you doing everybody? Welcome back to Stand Focus for Jesus. We live in a world of sissified Christianity. We live in a world of sissified men. We live in a world where if you say something that people deem as negative, they label you all type of um, things. They call you different type of, of names. And I don't so much have a problem with that because that's the world that we live in. The problem I have is when people try to bag up professing Christians do those things. They want to sissify God. They want to sissify Jesus Christ like he was some type of punk. They want to sissify the Holy Spirit. And they don't want to preach the fullness of God's char character. They want they don't want to preach the full character of God, the full character of the gospel, the full character of Jesus, the full character of the Holy Ghost. They just want to talk about love and forgiveness and all these wonderful good things but the same God that is loving is the same God that created hell for the devil and his angels and all those who reject the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross regardless of you believe it or not you will find out when you take your last, your last breath so there's no reason to argue about it when it's all said and done when we all take our last breaths Regardless if you believe what I'm saying or not, we will see who was right. We will see who was right. And this is the um the generation that we that we live in. The same God that created hell is the same God that created heaven. The same God that is loving is the same God that is pouring out his wrath upon the world in the book of Revelation. The same God that created man is the same God that is going to destroy wicked man. But people don't want to deal with these facts. Oh God, that's not the God that I serve. You don't serve the true God then. Because you are made in the image of God. God is not going to destroy himself. So therefore, your destruction is because you have destroyed yourself. You have destroyed the image of God, which is you. Which is why Christ came in the flesh. And even much more, why it was so important for him to come in the flesh. To redeem man who was made in his image. But still, to this day, people want to deny that God came in the flesh. That Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. And so when you live in times like we do now, God sends his people to proclaim the fullness of him. His full character, not only the goodness of God, but also the severity of those, the severity of God to those who reject the sacrifice of love that he made. I mean, do you really think that you're going to reject God's love and then you still get his love? That doesn't make any sense. So whatever we get is because of what we deserve. In the sense of eternal life is your birthright. It is your right to inherit eternal life and all the things that come along with it. More importantly, inherit Christ and be joint heirs with him. It is your birthright, birthright that belongs to you. But if you reject it, it doesn't mean that you're going to get that birthright if you sell it 
for a bowl of lentils, a bowl of red soup as Esau did. Or if you sell it for a man or a woman or a relationship or sex or drugs or this world or money, as the Bible teaches us. You sell it for that and you reject it, that's on you. God has done his part. So therefore, you get what you deserve. You deserve hell because you rejected the, the love of God. So I want to go to the scriptures and I want to read a few scriptures that paint a vivid picture for us, a vivid, powerful picture showing you that God is not playing. We will start in second Thessalonians chapter two. Verses number 10 through 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, in them that perish. Everybody doesn't go to heaven. Everybody doesn't rest in peace. There is no rest for the wicked. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word was manifest in the flesh. The truth dwells in us. The word dwells in us. You didn't receive it. Because they received not the love of the truth. You didn't love the truth. You love lies. You love darkness. You didn't love the light. Because light is love. The gospel is love. Truth is love. That they might be saved. So the scriptures tell us that you have to receive the truth. You have to receive the love of the truth. And that this love of the truth is what saves you. Ultimately rejecting the sacrifice that Christ made for us, the gospel. First Corinthians chapter 15 verses number one through four. The whole Bible prophesies about the coming of the Messiah and the sacrifice that he would make. So if you want to stay in the Old Testament, it still speaks about Jesus. The whole Old Testament is about Jesus. It's telling a complete story. The Bible is a history book, past, present, and future. It's because you don't believe it. You want to use the book because you know the book is powerful for your own gain. Teaching and preaching that gain is godliness. So what are the consequences of not receiving the love of the truth so that you could be saved? What are the consequences of it? Is it you just die? And that's it. Just soul sleep, you know. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So even before a person dies, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Why is God going to send a strong delusion where they will believe a lie, that they should believe a lie? Because they rejected the truth. They rejected the gospel. They rejected God's love. You didn't want his love, so this is what you get. But these are the things that the sissified version of Christianity doesn't teach you. They paint this punk, cowardless, cowardly Jesus Christ. When the Christ that true believers serve is no punk, is no coward. He is the strongest warrior of all. He is the king of kings. He is the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. 
Loved his people so much that he laid down his life for them. But for some reason, people want to paint that as cowardly. When we as mankind love life so much that we don't want to give it up. But they've flipped that. They've made good evil and evil good. They've taken the cowardly and made them courageous. The Bruce Jenners of the world. They taken the courageous and made them cowardly. The true Christians of the world who have laid down their lives and been crucified with Christ. Who have laid down the lust of the flesh, laid down their sins for the sake of love. But we are painted as the bad people. Because we speak out against the evils that they claim that they are against. It's all good until you speak out against it. You actually live it. It's all good until you actually do what you say you believe. Then there's a problem. And for this cause, God shall send them. And for this cause, God shall send Send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You're going to believe the lie because you rejected truth. So God is only going to give you what you want. Sounds pretty fair to me. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth. You believed not the gospel. You believe not the message of love. You receive not the message of love. You receive not God's love. Unless you all, all likewise repent, you shall all perish. You didn't believe that. You just got to believe. You don't have to repent. Even though repentance, true biblical repentance is given by God. Which is why you cannot have true faith without true repentance. And you cannot have true repentance without true faith. Because true biblical repentance given by God is going to lead you to faith in the gospel. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. They have pleasure in sin. That's why they didn't receive the truth. This is why so many people reject the true gospel. The true message of salvation. This is why people reject Christ. And they reject those who Christ has sent. Because they have pleasure in unrighteousness. They have pleasure in their sins. They love their sins more than they love life, true life, eternal life. They love their sins more than they love righteousness. They love unrighteousness more than they love righteousness. They love evil more than they love good. And they're willing to persecute any and everybody that comes against their beliefs at any cost because they can do anything they want to. They don't have any standards. They don't have a standard of perfection, which is the perfection of love that God is talking about when he tells us to be ye therefore perfect, for I am perfect. Be ye holy, for I am holy. God is calling us to have perfect love. Because when you have perfect love, there's no law against you. Because you haven't broken any laws because you're walking in love. You haven't steal, stolen or killed or committed adultery or fornication or covetousness or lied against somebody. You haven't worshipped other gods. You haven't, you haven't worshipped false graven images. You haven't broken the Sabbath. <laughs> because God said that it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. And preaching the gospel is good because preaching the gospel is love because somebody could die today. Somebody just died right now as I spoke that very word. Matter of fact, multiple people died and opened their eyes up in hell. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 66 verses number three through five. 
He that killeth an ox is as, he, is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. This is how bad it was during that time. With Israel. And we know the other nations, they followed suit because they were already in unrighteousness. And Israel was supposed to be a light to the other nations to draw them in ultimately point them to Christ when the promised seed came and so so many people Israelites they want to point the finger at the white man <laughs> when it's really Israel's fault and therein lies a the problem that they want to put the blame on everybody else when it was first and foremost their fault but also each and every individual person's fault showing you that we're all connected in some way form or fashion rather you like it or not black or white if I claim to be a minister of God and I'm not living what I preach and you're listening to me and you find out that I'm one of the biggest hypocrites ever that would affect you if I sleep with your wife, regardless if I'm a believer or not, that would affect you. If I kill somebody that you loved, regardless if I'm a believer or not, that not only affects you, but it affects those around you. Because remember, when you are married, you have two people coming together as one. Each individual person has families. So our decisions not only affect us immediately, but it affects those around us. What about the people that work with the loved ones that was murdered? What about their children? What about the mental state? What happens if, uh, let's say, you know, I murder your wife and your wife worked with some people at work. And she was real close to them. And then now this person that is affected by that murder, they cannot function properly because they're grieving, which affects their children and their family. And we know how children are so influenced by us adults. More specifically, how children are influenced by the parents. Children aren't born racist. Racism is something that is taught. Racism is something that is bred because it is hate. Hate is something that is bred. In, in a sense, they are giving life to the beast instead of letting love give life to them. Yea, they have chosen their own ways. Listen to what God says. They have chosen their own ways. So you either choose the way to, right, to righteousness, you choose righteousness, or you choose the way to unrighteousness, choosing unrighteousness. unrighteousness. You either choose heaven or choose hell. Because God gives everybody a choice. And that ties into free will. I'm probably going to say something that some people may not agree with, but you have free will and you have predestination. The Bible teaches both. A person can still have free will and be predestinated. A person cannot be predestinated and still have free will. A person cannot be predestinated, still have free will and still get saved. Because everybody serves a purpose. 
but we have to open up our minds, but more importantly, open up our hearts to receive the wisdom of God, to understand these things instead of arguing with man all the time. I don't even hardly argue with anybody anymore. Especially when I see they're not really trying to uh, listen. I don't have a problem with sitting down and having a conversation that may get heated. I mean, that's just, that's just life. <laughs> the disciples got into heated conversations. It's all throughout the scriptures. Doesn't mean that I hate that person because we get into a heated debate or argument or whatever you want to call it. It just means that I strongly disagree with what they are saying or their point. But in this sissified world that we live in, you can't do that. You got to do it on, on the world's terms. You can't do it the way the Bible calls to do it. And so again, yea, they have chosen their own ways. And their soul delighteth in their abominations. Not only are they choosing the ways of evil, but they are having joy in the evil that they are doing. They are having joy in sodomy, as the book of Romans chapter 1 talks about. They are having joy in fornicating with different men and different women, and sometimes both of them. They're, they have, they're having joy in other people's pain. The stuff I see on Facebook, the stuff I see going on around the world, I take no delight in it. I take no delight in the, the death of somebody else that's not, not saved. Because I know where they ended up, ended up at when they didn't have to. So even if you're not, I'm not doing that. I don't, I don't, I don't do that. I'm a upstanding American citizen. I stand for the constitution, God, country, and guns. But then you're supporting the racial tension <laughs> that's going on. You're supporting it. Or even worse, you're not taking a stand at all because it's not you or not your people. And that goes for both sides, both black and white. Guess what? You have chosen your own ways and your soul is delighting in other people's abominations and their hate. So you're just as guilty. By not taking a stand, you're just as guilty. Look at the consequences of, of that. I want to go back and read that one more time and then flow down into it to see the consequences of what we just said. Yea, they have chosen their own ways and their soul delighteth in their abominations. So what are the consequences to that? I also, this is God speaking, I also will choose their delusions. How deep you want to go? Now in the book of Thessalonians, we read that God shall send them strong delusions, right? Now we're adding to that knowledge and wisdom and understanding, and we're seeing that not only is God um, sending them strong delusions, but he's going to choose what their delusion is going to be. He's going to choose whatever lie it is that they're going to believe because why because they rejected the truth they rejected the gospel they rejected the light they rejected love and they chose to do evil over good they said to hell with you god to hell with your sacrifice that you made for us to hell with your son that's what they say they may not say it in those exact words, but you know we keep it real here. That's what they're saying in their heart. And they're saying some worse stuff than that.
And so because they do that, God said, okay, you, you want, you, you want to go to war like that? You want to boast yourself and carry yourself like you're the king? You want to boast and carry yourself like you're the God of everything? So if God Almighty is claiming that he is God Almighty, right? And then you have somebody else that comes along and say, no, I'm God Almighty. Oh, we got some problems. If somebody comes along and say, I am Kelson Delta King. I'm not afraid for you. I don't know my whole name. Somebody comes along and claim they're me. Guess what? We got some problems because they are not me. They are not me. So now we have to battle it out. So that the true Kelson Delta King can stand. Because at the end of the day, the true Kelson Delta King will stand. Because it is truth. So if a person claims that they are God Almighty or they are boasting and carrying themselves as God. But God is sitting on his throne and saying, no, I'm God. And this other person is saying, no, I'm God. Oh, we got some problems. We finna go to war. Satan. I will be like the Most High. Satan walks into the temple when the time comes and declares himself as God. Notice at first he said that I will be like the Most High. <laughs> then he says that I am. He declares himself as God. Because does not the Bible teach us to be like Christ? So it wasn't a matter of him trying to be like God. It was a, it was a matter of his intent in his heart. Think about that. We are made in the image of God. So therefore, if I'm made in the image of God and you are made in the image of God, then of course you're going to be trying to be like God to create stuff and do all these different things. But when you take that and you have the intent of your heart to be like God and say, I'm going to overthrow God. Oh, 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 you got some problems. So if you are claiming that you are God, then that means that you're going to be held at God's standard. If you're claiming you're a prophet, the Bible said that you will receive a prophet's reward. If you claim that you are a Christian, then you will receive a Christian's reward, meaning that you will be judged by Christian standards or you will be judged by a prophet's standards. If you are claiming that you are God, then you're going to be judged by the standard of God. <laughs> I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. So not only will God choose their delusion because they had pleasure in unrighteousness they delighted in their abominations but he will bring your fears upon you you scared of spiders you scared of clowns you know you see those different movies and people see different things and they're scared of them that stuff is not just movies that stuff is real it's real and it's only a foreshadow of what's to come Whatever you're afraid of in here and in your heart, when the time comes because you rejected God's love, he's going to bring those fears upon you. You scared of snakes, you scared of rabbits or whatever. You may get a rabbit, is a, a rabbit, rabbit, a rabbit, <laughs> rabid, rabbit. <laughs> what are you afraid of? You're afraid of being abducted by aliens? You're afraid of black people? You're afraid of white people? You're afraid of having your family killed by a black person or you're afraid of having your family killed by the KKK? What are your fears? God is going to bring those fears upon you. But for those of us who are in Christ, guess what the Bible tells us? Perfect love, cast out fear. 
And I go even farther. Perfect love casts out all fear. There's nothing that can be thrown at us that we will be fearful to the point of rejecting salvation, rejecting Christ. Doesn't mean that our flesh doesn't isn't scared or startled or whatever it may be, because it's the flesh. But we are not our flesh. We are who we are inwardly also, more importantly. And who we are inwardly, we are one with Christ through the Spirit. And Christ laid down his life. He had no fears. He didn't fear death. The one thing that people cannot escape. Christ defeated. So now we have escaped death. So we have no fear of death. You can escape certain things, but death, it plagues us all. Then God continues on and he says, because when I called, none did answer. So God called, whatever your name is, God called you and you didn't answer. You threw them, you threw, the, threw up both middle fingers. To hell with you, God. I'm a rock and roll, yeah. Or, I don't, I don't need you, God. I've, I've done nothing wrong. I'm a, I'm a good person. Don't you see my resume at works, Lord? All these things I've done for you. I'm an upstanding American citizen. I stand for God, country, and guns, and the USA flag. God bless America. Or, death to the white man. The white man enslaved us. The white man, Esau. Esau, white man is the devil. The most high. He gonna he gonna he gonna bring fire and brist on the white man. The white man gonna burn the hell for what he's done. All white people are the devil. I got impersonations for days. I know some people are probably laughing at me right now. But you get the point. Not realizing that majority majority of those people well, all of them that I just impersonated are going to burn in hell, both black and white, for their hate, for their rejection of the light when Esau isn't even what we call a white man. <laughs> you got white devils and you got black devils. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. God doesn't delight in sin. But people today choose to do sin over choosing to do good. Let me add to that. Choosing to do good in Christ. Because just, just because you do good doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Because if you truly love good, you have no problem receiving Christ. The person of Christ, the spirit of Christ. Many people receive the teachings of Christ, but they don't receive Christ himself. They don't receive Christ himself because they don't want to die to selves for the sake of what they're claiming that they love, which is love and truth. They really don't. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. I tremble at the word of God because it's so powerful. The word of God holds everything together. The word of God is what's holding this video together for you to sit here and listen to it. Because he spoke it. He spoke knowledge. He spoke wisdom. He spoke understanding. And it, boom, came into existence. And it, it just went forth and is continually doing what it's called to do. It's just a matter of how you choose to use that knowledge. 
Facebook isn't evil. Facebook is evil. Facebook is the devil. No. It's what you choose to do with Facebook. Facebook is just a tool. Facebook is just knowledge. Facebook is built off of knowledge of how things work to come up with Facebook. Satan. The Bible talks about him being the the um, wisest beast. He chose to take the knowledge that God had given him and use it for evil to try to overthrow God. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified. But he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. Now notice that last part. He says, he, the Lord, Jesus Christ, he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. So Christ can appear to somebody for somebody's joy and then another person can see something else. A person can see black people as evil and then another person can see somebody, a black person as joyful. A person can see a white person as evil, but another person can see white, a white person and white people as a joy. A person can see Christ as joy, but they, another person can see Christ as wicked and vile and filthy and dirty. Because that's what they want to see. They don't want to see the truth. They don't want to see that there is joy in God creating what we call people of color. They don't want to see that there is joy in God creating what we call white people. They don't want to see the full creativity of God. How we all have different features, yet we still come from the same dirt. <laughs> How black people are different and how they carry themselves and how white people are different overall. Both black people and white people overall and how they carry themselves. How you have different cultures and how, you know what I'm saying, we can have the same tool but one group of people can use it for one thing and other group of people can use it for something else. And you're like, man, that was pretty cool. The, the creativity of God all around us. The creativity of the, the animals and everything. We'll sit here and we'll watch, you know, Animal Planet and we'll watch the animals and, and, and how they, they care of themselves and, you know, and how they interact with each other. But when it comes to people, oh, we don't, yeah, too. whatever, man. Rejecting the, the full creativity of God and his creation. I mean, that's, that's, that's just, it's cool. My white brothers and my, my black brothers. My white sisters and my black sisters. The creativity of God, like, dang. Like, that's, you know, you're just checking out, like, it's art. Everything is art. <laughs> we don't even realize it. The creation of man is art. God, like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Let, let, let's do that. We gonna, let's make him like that. Let's make her like that. Let, you know, let's, let's switch it up a little bit. A little, little flavor, a little salt. Let's not be bland. But we live in a bland world. People want to be bland. They want to act colorblind. There's no black and there's no white. Jesus, Jesus wasn't black or white. <laughs> Whatever. It's colorblind. Continue to play colorblind. My eyes are open physically to the, all the beautiful colors and all the beautiful people and all the beautiful things that God has created. And my eyes are open spiritually. When I get to heaven, I'm gonna see colors that I've never seen before. I'm not gonna be colorblind and say, oh, I don't know what that color is. I'm be like, whoa, I've never seen that color before. I'm not gonna be like, all I see is black and white and gray. Dullness. No, I see the 
the full spectrum of colors. I see the creativity of God. Why did you make that color the way you made it, God? What is this color? What you know? What, I'm what is this purpose? What is the purpose of God making black people and white people different colors? Because he can. Because he said he created all things for his pleasure and for his enjoyment. Both black and white. Both white and black. So let's not play this game. Let's walk in the fullness of who God has created us to be. To serve him, to love, and to experience his creation to the fullness. And give him glory for the creation that he made for us to enjoy also. But you can't do that if you don't if you, if you're not walking in love. All you're going to see is what you want to see. You're never going to fully experience life. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 8 through 10. Ye have feared the sword, and I will bring a sword upon you, saith the Lord God. <laughs> they feared the sword, and of course you can go read the context of what's going on, but you get the point. They feared the sword, and what did God say? And I will bring a sword upon you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you out of the midst thereof, and deliver you into the hands of strangers, and nothing worse than <laughs> you being delivered over to somebody that you don't know what the heck they're going to do with you. Imagine being on the slave ships, being taken from your land into a land that you aren't familiar with, a language that you aren't familiar with. People yelling and screaming at you, men with guns that you've never seen, weaponry you've never seen. so bad that that women and even men women would take the church and they would go overboard because of the conditions they couldn't understand the language but they understood what was going on enough to say i'd rather die imagine that put yourself there what happens if your greatest fear is being taken captive by the very people that you hate. Can you imagine the fear that would grip you if you're fearful of black people and you get taken, you get handed over to black people and they have so much hate for you. They have no, not one ounce of remorse or love for you. Can you imagine that? The fear that would be gripping you? Or what if you hate white people? And you're taken captive by white people in the future. Can you imagine a fear that would grip you? And I use the slave ship example to put you in a place to understand both sides. And yes, I know there were white slaves it was a small group but guess what they were believers <laughs> they were the strangers that were among israel way back when they made the covenant with god and that's that's a whole nother sermon yes overall it was israel but there were also other people there that made agreements entered into the covenant which means that the curses would also kick in on their Ancestor 2, which um, overall in that aspect would be what we call uh, white people. So you do have white people that the curse is kicked on to because their forefathers and foremothers, they entered into the covenant at the Mount, at Mount Sinai also. Both sides, both Jews and Gentiles, always, always been there the whole time. We just... We overall mankind, we see what we want to see and Christians too. We see what we want to see instead of seeing what God wants us to see and preaching the full counsel of God.
And again, he says, and I will bring you out of the midst thereof and deliver you into the hands of strangers and will execute judgments among you. So we know he's speaking about Israel. Israel, we know as a people of color, um, they were handed over, delivered into the hands of strangers and, um, and judgment was executed among the Israelites. And that time is coming to an end because even though the problem that God has is even though Israel rebelled against God's covenant and because they rebelled against that covenant, then there were consequences to that to have judgment exacted on them. The oppressors, the ones, the slave masters and stuff, um, they were still supposed to be righteous. They were still supposed to handle things in a godly way. They were still supposed to treat the people with respect, but they didn't do that. And when it was time to let them go, they didn't let them go. They continued to oppress them. They, it's still being done. If you're not in that group, then you have nothing to worry about. If you're in Christ, then you're good. But we cannot deny what, what has happened in history and what's going on right now. We can't play blind. Because we don't want to deal with certain things. That was, again, that was, uh, th that's the problem that God has. There was no righteousness on either side. Yes, God is saying, I allow my people to do it, to, uh, go into the situation because of their rebellion. They're my children. I'm going to chastise them, hand them over to the hands of the enemy. But God is the God of both Jews and Gentiles. So Gentiles were supposed to carry themselves in a certain way, which they were in, they were the slave masters and they were claiming that they were Christians. So how can they claim to be believers and do the atrocities that they done in unrighteousness? So God has a issue with them and you go read the book of Joel, I think is what Joel two. Is it Joel 2 or Joel 3? Um, I think it's Joel chapter 2. And you see what God is going to do in righteousness. And we've covered that before too. It continues on. It says, ye shall, ye shall fall by the sword. I will judge you in the border of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So the whole point of God chastising his people so that they can know that he is the Lord. That he is the Lord. He's trying to get your attention. But we don't want to pay attention to what God is saying. We're not hearkening to his voice. We're not listening to the words that he speaks to us. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to do what I want to do. And we wonder why we keep having the problems that we're having in our society, in the world, and even on a personal level. When is the violence going to stop? <sighs> it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop. It's going to continue to get worse. And you can hate it or love it. It's going to continue to get worse. I continue to tell people that on Facebook, because <laughs> majority of people that I uh, majority of people that are on my friends list on Facebook are people of color. So I speak majority of the time in perspective of addressing people of color. And I tell them because they're making points about, um, you know, all the killings and stuff and everything, the killings that are happening in our city that, that I live in, and, you know, what's happening amongst, uh, you know, the police shootings and everything uh, is going to, it's going to continue to happen. <laughs> I'm purposely trying to rile them up to point them to Jesus. So hopefully they can see that God is allowing it because this is what you want. Because if you didn't want it, then you would come to Christ. First Samuel chapter eight, verse number seven. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. It's not about me. It's not about us Christians. It's about Christ. When you reject 
the message that I have been given to preach. When you reject the message that other true born again believers have been given to preach the message, which is the gospel, which is the light, which is love, which is the fulfillment of the law. You don't reject us so much, but you more so you reject Christ. You reject God because you don't want God to reign over you as God and King of Kings. You don't want that. You want to reign over him. That's what, that's what this whole thing is about. Let's go to Proverbs chapter one, verse 22 through 33. How long ye simple ones will ye love simplicity and the scorners and the scorners delight in their scorning and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. He asked this question. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. God making his word known among us, but we reject it. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel. And with none of my reproof. So you just pretty much you said to hell with your knowledge, of God, to hell with your counsel, to hell with your correction. We correct ourselves the way we want to correct ourselves. Look what God says. I also will laugh at your calamity. People don't want to talk about that though, do they? I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock. When your fear cometh, what fear? The same fear that God sent upon them. The same fear that he chose, whatever that fear was for them. He's going to laugh and mock. But people don't want to talk about that character of God, do they? God wouldn't do that. Oh, yes, he would. And yes, he is. Because you continue to reject his love. You continue to reject his mercy. So he's only giving you what you want. You continue to reject his reproof, his correction. You continue to re reject his doctrine, his teaching, his love. So guess what? I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation. You ever seen a woman that has tried over and over year after year and tried everything to have a child, but she cannot have a child? Have you seen the despair and desolation of a woman like that? I have. You've seen it in the movies. You probably know somebody like that. It's not a pretty sight. Barren, a wasteland, dead, not able to bear life. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Oh, there's more. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? Why when they call, will not God answer? Why when they seek God early during this time that they will not find him? For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They chose evil. They chose unrighteousness. They were none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. You didn't want to hear the godly counsel of God. You didn't want to hear the true born again Christians warning you and telling you in love. You wanted to, you wanted to demonize us. Therefore, demonizing Christ and therefore demonizing the father. 
You wanted to despise all the reproof of God, the correction. You wanted to say, don't judge me. Don't correct me. Who do you think you are? Not realizing that it is God who sent us. It is God who gave us the spirit of power and authority to correct righteously. You didn't want none of that. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. So God only gives you what you want. You want hell, you're going to get hell. You're going to eat the fruit of hell. Because you have hell dwelling in you. You have hate dwelling in you. You don't have love dwelling in you. You have the sissified version of Christianity. You have a sissified Christ. You don't have the true king, the true Messiah, the true warrior who laid down his life for his people. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. You got devices of hate. You got devices of adultery. You got devices of fornication. You're going to eat that fruit in hell. Over and over and over and over and over again. You're going to continue to live a literal hell. Over and over again. Saying about Dante's Inferno. As people say, that's what hell is based off of. No, that's based off the Bible. This is what the Bible teaches. The Bible says that in hell people will be salted with fire. And their sacrifices will be salted with fire. So how do you be how you salt it with fire? What does salt do? Salt intensifies. It gives flavor. So when somebody is salted with fire in hell, what does that tell you? They will be seasoned with hell. Their sins will be intensified with fire. They will be seasoned with fire. And their sacrifices will be salted also. The sacrifice they made on this earth. The sacrifices of sins, they will be seasoned, meaning they will be intensified that much more in hell. Because things are intensified more in the spiritual anyway. You're going to reap the fullness of what you have sown. You have sown corruption, unrighteousness. You're going to reap the fruit of that all the way. If this is what you choose. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. And the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. There's always hope though. As long as you still have breath in your body. There's always hope. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely. And shall be quiet from fear of evil. How many of us can say that today? That you are, you're not afraid of anything. You're not afraid to die. You're not afraid of what's going on in the world. You don't, you don't care. It doesn't bother you to the point of you're losing sleep over it. You care to the point of other people are bothered by it. And then them not realizing what's going on and not having what you have, which is peace. And no fear of evil. That's what bothers you. Not because of what's going on. In, in a sense of, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is on my doorsteps. It, it, it's, it's coming. It's going to get me. <laughs> but whoso hearkeneth, hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. I love reading the Bible. It just comes alive. That's why you see me so animated a lot of times. Because I, I want to put you there. Because the word is living. It's not dead. The word animates me. But we'll sit here and we'll watch movies all day. And man, did you see that movie? You see that movie? And the Bible is more real than the movies. And the movies are based off, not based off, <laughs> based off um, stuff they got out the Bible. Coincidence? Psalms chapter two, verse one through five. But I understand the lore of movies. Movies, you know, they're they're cool. Movies tell a story. They just tell a, a visual story. That's why they're so captivating. Because people are captivated by the visual, but they can't see the spiritual. What well, we said, um, we said, um, Psalms chapter two, verse one through five. 
Why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves. And the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. And against his anointed. Saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Let's get, let's get, let's get them out of here, man. We, we can't live the way we want to live and rule the way we want to rule in darkness and unrighteousness. We got to get rid of them. We got to get them out of here. Matter of fact, we got to go through portals so we can enter into heaven and we can dethrone God because they're only doing what God has told them to do. They're only following in the footsteps of their father. So we can get rid of their father. I mean, we can get rid of all of them. And we can rule the way that we want to rule. He that sitteth, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. People don't want to talk about that, though, do they? The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall... He speak unto them in his wrath. He didn't say that he was going to speak to them in his love, did he? He said, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Even when God is speaking to them in his wrath, he's still having mercy because you ain't dead. Because when you die, that's it. God is so merciful. I mean, how do you want it? God will speak to you in a soft voice or God will give it to you hard. Oh, you can't speak like that, brother King. You can't speak strong. You got to come to the people soft and everything. I come how God sends me to. I give the message how God gives me to give the message. If I need to bring it, then guess what? I'm going to bring it. If I need to give it softer, then guess what? I'm going to give it softer. But at the end of the day, no matter how I give the message, if the message is meant for them, then they will receive it. If it ain't meant for them, rather I give it soft or hard, it ain't meant for them, and they're going to reject it either way. Just as God speaks softly, the Bible talks about that still small voice. But here you see God speaking to them. He says, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. But even in that, God is still showing them love because he has not completely destroyed them, giving them still a chance. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 65, verse 11 through 15. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. So what do we have here? You have people forsaking the Lord, forgetting his holy mountain, preparing a table for the troop, for that troop. For what troop? The troop of enemies that are speaking against God, that are forsaking God, that are forgetting his holy mountain. You prepare a table for them, like eat so you can be filled, so you can be prepared and well nourished to fight against the Lord. You prepare a table for them. You furnish drink unto, you furnish a, you furnish the drink offering unto that number. What number? The troop of enemies that are against God. You prepare a meal for them. How wicked are you if you be one of these people? Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. This is the same God of love that we are talking about. Behold, my servants 
shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirits. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. We know he's speaking to Israel overall. But the Bible says that all scripture is good for instruction, for reproof, for correction, uh, instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be fully furnished unto, I think he said, good works. Or every good work. Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 7 through 11. For every one of for every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger take it from the top again. Because I know you're like, well, it's, it's speaking to Israel, it's speaking to Israel. Oh, it's speaking to other people too. Remember we talked about that earlier? And not only the strangers that were sojourning, but everybody. For every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel. Which separateth, which separateth himself from me, and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his inequity before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. So they knew about God, right? But instead of going to ask God, they said, yeah, we're not going to do it that way. Not only did they do that, not only did they reject God, but they set up idols in their heart and they put a stumbling block of inequity before God's face. They put sin in between them and God purposely and said, yeah, let's put up a wall of sin so God can't get to us. Purposely, they built a wall of unrighteousness and then they went to a prophet and they inquired about God and say what was he doing over there what, what's going on what was he thinking what was what was going on why because they wanted to overcome God they're trying to be a, a few steps or whatever ahead of God so they can expand their kingdom of unrighteousness what's God doing what's he talking about what's going on over there and come unto a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, meaning concerning God. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. So God said, even though you did all this, I'm still going to come to you and answer you man to man, face to face. This is the God that we serve. This is the real Jesus Christ. He's not a punk. He's not a coward. He said, oh, even though you did all that, guess what? I know you I know you want to overcome me. I know you want to take my throne. I know you want to kill me. I know you want to exalt yourself above me. I know you're building up all these weapon weapons against me. But guess what? I'm going to come to you and answer you for myself face to face. I will answer you myself. You talk about a powerful God. We serve a, a, a real God. And we are created in his image. God ain't no punk. That's what the name of the movie should have been. Let me let me get some money so I can make some movies. You want to see some real movies? <laughs> some real Christian movies? Oh, get, let me get a few dollars. I ain't going to make a movie called God Ain't Dead. God's Not Dead. I'm making a movie called God's Not a Punk. God Ain't No Coward and Everybody Else Is. What? God ain't no coward. Jesus Christ ain't no coward. And everybody else is. I'm calling out all false prophets in the movie. We going at Muhammad, uh, Buddha, Ghani. We going at all of them in the movie. <laughs> Have no fear. No fear. <laughs> I, I, I love that. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. <laughs> And I will set my face against that man 
and will make him a sign and a proverb. So God said, you want to come at me? Then guess what? Let's go. You want to go to war with me? <laughs> Let's go. If you want peace, hey, let's, let's work this out. Let's, let's work this out because you're not the, you're not gonna beat me. You can't beat me. I am who I am. This is what God is saying. He cannot help who He is because who He is is who He is. But if you want to go there, guess what? He's a He's a righteous God. His reputation is on the line. And I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So God can use somebody else and you'd be like, Woo, God ain't playing. God's not playing. And God's making an example of so many people today. You want to come against me? You want to? Proclaim yourself and boast yourself as God because that's ultimately what it's all about. Okay. You're going to be held to the godly standard of perfection and you will be found wanting and you will be destroyed because that's what the godly standard is. You want to hold yourself to God and you don't meet the standards and you will be destroyed because the standard of God is love. It's perfection. Perfection of love. And if the prophet be deceived, when he when he hath spoken a thing, I the Lord have deceived that prophet. <laughs> oh, these are scriptures that people don't want to talk about, though. Let's read that one more time. And if the prophet be deceived, when he hath spoken a thing, remember the man or whoever it is went to the prophet. God said that what I the Lord have deceived that prophet. So the Lord deceived that prophet and then the person that came to that prophet inquiring about the Lord, they're going to believe what the prophet said when really it was a deception sent by God so that they could believe what the prophet said so that they could be deceived because they didn't worship God when they knew God. <laughs> oh. oh my God. I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. And I will stretch out my hand upon him. Why? Because he knew better. And will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity or their sin. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. So if you seek after false prophets and you believe what they say and you see that they're leading you away from Christ then you're going to bear the same punishment as that prophet. Because you knew better. The Bible says that God is uh, doesn't want anybody to perish, but that all should come to repentance. So he's going to each, and indiv each individual person. I got mercy for you. I got love for you. I got grace for you. I got for forgiveness for you. Nah, I'm good, Lord. I got mercy for you. I got grace for you. I got love for you. I got forgiveness for you. Please. Nah, I'm good, Lord. I got mercy for you. I got love for you. I got grace for you. I got forgiveness for you. You don't understand. I gave I gave my son to be sacrificed for you. Now nah, I'm good, Lord. Stop coming to me. Leave me alone. To hell with you and your sacrifice. Oh, it's, it's like that. It's like it's like that. God goes back with his head down. The servants of God go back before God thrown with their head down and say they didn't receive the message father they killed us they persecuted us they lied on your name they lied on us therefore lying on you they said to hell with you they said they're going to take you off your throne and they're going to put you in hell They said they're coming for us. They said they're coming for you. They have trodden underfoot the blood of your son, Jesus Christ.
and they shall bear the punishment of their inequity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me. An example to all others. Neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions. The, the, the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross is an example to all of us. That, hey, you can come be crucified with me so you can have eternal life. Or you can look upon me. As they looked upon the serpent around the pole in the wilderness. That the Bible talks about. He had, he had to be lifted up as a serpent in the, in the wilderness. Why serpent? Because the serpent, if you look um, throughout history, serpent is also known as a worm. And Christ said, I am but a worm. The worm representing the weakness, the weakness of the flesh. It all ties together. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, Christ crucified the weakness of the flesh. The Bible says that he was tempted in all ways that we are tempted, but he did not sin. He became sin for us. And so you can either look on Christ for good or look on to him and say, I'm good. I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want that. I don't want to be crucified with him. The sacrifice that Christ made is a, is a representation, also or, or, or is real, not just a representation, but real of the weakness of the flesh. Meaning he took on our sins in his flesh, overcame them. that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people and I may be their God, self the Lord God. So Christ is an example for everybody. Rather you wanna see him as an example for good or, or bad. Judges chapter 10, verse 11 through 14. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, did, I, did not I deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites, from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines? The, Zaz Zaz <laughs> the Zidonians also and the Amalekites and the Moanites did oppress you, and ye cried to me, and I delivered you out of their hands. Yet ye have forsaken me, and served other gods. Wherefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Go cry to your gods that you serve, and let them deliver you. The gods of Egypt. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Interesting, huh? Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. What do we have coming up? The time of Jacob's trouble. You rejected God in this time period that we call the age of grace. You serve and you worship other gods. So in your time of tribulation, which is coming, let your gods deliver you from that tribulation but they won't be able to because your gods will be here with you. If your gods are so powerful, then why can they not, can they not deliver you from the time period that is to come? Why can't not the gods, the gods stop anything that's happening? Why can they not stop the violence and everything? 
because they're the ones that are pushing it. They just have majority of you deceived into thinking that they're not. Because that's what they want. Psalms chapter 37 verse 12 through 20. The wicked plotteth against the just. Hmm. And gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him. Oh, you don't want to hear those scriptures though. You don't want to hear the Lord laughing at the wicked plotting against the, the just. You don't want to hear those scriptures though. You, you preach stuff like that. Oh man, you got to preach love. You got to preach love, man. You can't, you can't preach that. You're going to run the people off. <laughs> it's not my job to worry about if somebody's going to be ran off or not. My job is to preach the truth. Your job is to preach the truth. Regardless if they don't want to hear it, if they like it or not. Regardless if you're going to run them off or draw them to Christ. Because your whole motive is love. The Lord shall laugh at him. For he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy. People will defend the wicked, but they won't defend the poor and needy though. And to slay such as be of upright conversation. They'll defend the wicked, but they won't defend the, they won't defend those who are speaking against wickedness. Their sword shall enter into their own heart. Oh man, you can't preach those scriptures, man. You can't do that, man. You're going to push people away. And their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. I mean, the strength of them. And their arms, some of them, their arms will be literally broken too. But the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright. And their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. So, you know what I'm saying? People are talking about, there's no catching away. Or you, you're afraid to die. They should not be ashamed in the evil time. So regardless, if, the, if we are here for the tribulation, I will not be ashamed in the evil time. I'm going to endure, regardless if it's now or then. <laughs> I'm not going to fall away because, oh my gosh, I got to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, all of a sudden, I'm not, I don't want anything to do with Christ. <laughs> it's foolishness. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. <laughs> but the wicked shall perish. And the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. Excuse me. They shall consume. Into smoke shall they consume away. They will literally be turned into hell because hell dwells in them. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 25. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Didn't say anything about the desolation of the righteous, did it? I wonder why. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24 through 30. The fear of the wicked. It shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. The desire of the righteous shall be granted. So what if your desire is to be caught up? And to not have to go through the same wrath as the wicked. Because God doesn't, God doesn't destroy the righteous with the wicked. Did God destroy Abraham with Sodom and Gomorrah? And then God said that it's going to be worse than Sodom and Gomorrah when his wrath is poured out. So now all of a sudden God is going to destroy us with the wicked when the time of Jacob's trouble comes. But he just said 
but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. Foundation can't get rid of the foundation because Christ is the foundation. He is everlasting life. So you can kill us, but guess what? We're still, we're still going to be alive. We're already dead anyway. Flesh is dead. As vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to them that send him. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. You want your days to be long so you can enjoy what God has given you in, in this life? Enjoy your family and stuff? The fear of the Lord. The respect of the Lord. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. You wonder why people are dying at early ages, not living out their days, and you know just, their life is just terrible and they're dying these crazy deaths. You're like, what? I've seen some Final Destination type of stuff. I just scratched my head and be like, Final Destination just ain't no movie. It's biblical. <laughs> but people don't realize that, man. Like, Final Destination, man, that was crazy, man. Oh, that stuff happens for real. I've seen it. And y'all have seen it too. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. But the expectation of the wicked shall perish. So how do you have... How that if you got fire and brimstone and, you know, hell literally being loose on earth. <laughs> Unless you're not there for it. But even, even if you are, if you fall away during that time, then you will never save in the first place. If you fall away now, you will never save. If you have to go through that time and you're here now and you fall away, you will never save in the first place. Doesn't matter what time period you are in. If you're saved by God, then you are saved and you will endure whatever is being thrown at you. Right now, it's more of a spiritual assault. But very, very soon, it's going to be what people want physical. It's going to be a physical assault. They're going to see the spiritual manifest in the flesh fully. I don't want to see things that go bump in the night in this physical body that I'm in right now. I don't want to see that. You ever watch a scary movie and you make your skin crawl and stuff? And you're like, oh, oh, oh. You're like, man, that was kind of real. Because a lot of those scary movies, that stuff is real. Uh, I think it was American Werewolf in London or whatever. You go do the research on that. One of those werewolf movies, they say it was a real werewolf. I remember watching that movie a while back. Not since I, I don't think I was saved. Um, I think I used to watch movies and stuff. Yeah. But I remember after the fact, they were talking about it. And I was like, I said, that was kind of real. That werewolf scene was, was creepy and it was real. Now I understand why, because it was a real werewolf that was transforming. They used in that, um, in that movie and other movies too. I don't want to see a werewolf. I don't want to stand face to face with a werewolf in this body that I am in now. I will probably pee and defecate on myself. And then probably rebuke him after the fact, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. I'm just being real. If you want to face a werewolf face to face at nighttime in the alley, then hey, <laughs> go ahead. But I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want to face a werewolf. So why in the world would you want to face hell literally being loose on earth? Why would you want to face the wrath of God? That doesn't make any sense. The way of the Lord is, is strength to the upright. The only way I would be able to come overcome a werewolf or a vampire, or any of these, these things that are real, is the strength of the Lord. But destruction shall be to the workers of inequity. The righteous shall never be removed. You mean you can't never lose your salvation? No, you can't because it's Christ who saved you. You didn't save yourself. Yes, you made the choice when he gave you the choice. But he is the one who put the spirit in you. He is the one who seals you. Only the king can break the seal, not you. The Bible doesn't say that 
that you are your own temple. The Bible said that you are the temple of God. So God puts himself in the temple, in the heart. He sits on the throne. The heart is the throne. Go look at it. <laughs> the, 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 the whole, your whole body is the gospel. There, there's sermons out there on that. And Lord willing, I'm going, I'm Lord willing, I'm going to do a whole sermon proving to you that your body is literally the temple of God. The gospel is contained in your body. It's in your DNA. The heart is the throne of God that where he sits at. And guess who made the temple for, for him to sit there? God. But people want to overthrow God and put what they want to in the temple. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 through 17, and we will close with these scriptures. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs. Now the fig tree is a representation of Israel. <laughs> hint, hint, hint. When she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, underground bunkers prophesied in the Bible and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. You must understand that. The Father has committed all judgment to the Son. It is Christ who is pouring out the wrath upon the world. And, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath, whose wrath? The Lamb, who is Christ, is come. And who shall be able to stand? So you're telling me that Christ who is the lamb is going to pour out wrath upon his own bride. So you're telling me that the Bible says in the book of Thessalonians that God has not appointed us to wrath is going to pour out wrath upon us. And it's Christ who's pouring out the wrath upon his own bride. But he told us that we are not appointed to wrath, but the scripture tells us right here, when the sixth seal is broken, that his wrath has come. I think I believe the Bible. If Jesus said that we are not appointed to wrath, and we are the bride of Christ, and we see in Revelation chapter 6 that his wrath has come, and that it is Christ who is pouring out the wrath, then that means that Christ isn't going to pour his wrath upon me. Christ isn't going to pour his wrath upon his bride. And we read all the scriptures about what's going to happen to the wicked. But I'm not wicked anymore. I'm in Christ. I'm dead yet I live, but it is Christ who lives in me. So Christ is going to pour out wrath upon his own self because Christ dwells in me. But I thought that Christ took the price, I mean, took the wrath of the Father for me on Calvary's cross. So that doesn't make any sense for Christ to pour out wrath upon me if he already paid the price and had the wrath poured out upon himself in his own flesh on Calvary's cross for him to pour it pour out on me again. What? Unless I'm not appointed to wrath because Christ already paid the price and had the wrath poured out, poured out upon me. Because I am in him, he's not going to pour out the wrath again upon me. So therefore, that means I have to be gone at least before Revelation 6 seal is broken.
Because we just read so many scriptures where God is going to send the strong delusion. He's going to choose the delusion that he's going to send upon the people who have rejected the light, which is the gospel, which is the message of love. God bless each and every one of you in Jesus Christ's name. As always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, truth is not debated. It is declared. The things that you are afraid of, your fears, your greatest fears, are going to come to life. You scared of the puppet master? Remember the puppet master where the dolls were coming to life? You scared of voodoo and the dolls and everything? Oh, it's going to come to life. You scared of images and pictures moving and stuff coming out of pictures and coming at you and everything? Oh, God is going to bring those fears upon you because you rejected the truth. You love not the truth, but you had pleasure in sin. Like I tried to hell, you a Christian Go to church, say the sinner's prayer, you a Christian Stay getting high, getting throwed, yeah Monday through Saturday, anything go, yeah Caught up in the world and left your first love Jesus died in your place, he shed his precious blood But you gotta be seen, pastor, apostle Wake up, church, time to go so and preach the gospel you are 